To me, reparation is about repairing the damage that has been done to you. But first, must be honest enough to recognise that said damage in its myriad manifestations. There's not one thing in us, many things. Then you can begin to work out healing strategies. That's what my brother was giving you today. Strategies for healing. And it begins with self. It begins with loving self. Because otherwise, nothing changes. Look at this. This picture. Who's ever been to Canada? Toronto. You see them in Toronto? They patrol up and down the high streets in Toronto. You see them, sir? Yes. When I was in Toronto a few years ago with one of my nieces who lives there, they've relocated there, I was walking down the road with her. This individual, do you know what he said to me when I, as I walked past him? That's why I put him on the front of my book. You know what he said to me? He didn't say, hello, brother. He didn't say, could I have a word with you, brother? He said, fornicator. That's how he approached me in the street. Oh, you're a fornicator. I don't know why he called me that. I didn't have a word with me at the time. I was walking with a young girl. He put up two and two together and come up with an arm night in the skin. <laughs> so what I did was I said to him, how long are you going to be here, mate? Because I was in a hurry and I think the shop shut at 2 o'clock at the house in Toronto. I said, are you going to be here for a little while? He said, yes, I soon come. <laughs> what I did, because my mother and my father told me, you do not meet people with disrespect. Mm -hmm. If they get out of order, they do whatever they have to do. But first you must greet them in the spirit of reasoning. So I did. But what I said to my niece was, I said, go over the road, she was about 15 at the time. I said to her, go over the road and take some pictures of me and Jesus. I watched Jesus' demeanor change. So I said to him, I went back and I said, Yes, sir, he wanted to speak to me. Well, we had a little conversation for about 30 seconds. Then I said to him, why are you dressed like that? And carry on with whatever, give him his little leaflet, you see I took the leaflet. Then I said to him, why are you dressed like that? But I asked the question, carry on with this. I said, why are you dressed like that, mate? Are you Jesus? But he swore my question. I said to him, if you don't answer my question, we ain't having no reasoning. I want to know, why are you dressed like that? Are you Jesus? He never answered me to this day. He couldn't answer me. And I said to him, isn't it funny that in that book that you're waving around so flagrantly, it says, don't worship graven images. I said, you're one standing in front of me. <laughs> Am I wrong? We need to be honest. But I know, and I said to him, I know what that power of that image has. That's why in my book, in the last chapter, I break down that image. And I show you why that image was created. And I show you why after, why after the Second World War, that became one of the most dangerous images for us as peoples of African ancestry. I show you the deliberation behind creating that image. Because if we're going to say we're not supposed to worship them, why have them? And why look like that? Years ago when I used to chat on sound system, people used to get upset with me. I had a lyric that said, if you're not a seer, we're going to feel about taking off the wine and looking in the mirror. Amen. And people used to say to me, Amen. oh, how can you do that? How can you say that? You can't say that. I used to say, are you God? Amen. Who are you to tell me what I can say and what I can question? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like no liberatory God to me. That sounds like a man trying to oppress me and teach me how to think. Not happy. Next slide. In my book I said, why this is the ever-present, non-presence that molds and shapes reality. It's what we get every day. Yeah. Just a few little quotes. But Marley, if you know your history, you would know where you're coming from. Then you wouldn't have to ask me who the hell I think I am. Malcolm X said, I ain't left nothing in Africa, that's what you say. You left your mind in Africa. Let me show you why. Let's move, bro. Who saw this last week? A couple of weeks ago, remember? Africans are less intelligent than Westerners, says DNA Pioneer. 
Yeah, it was on the front page of the Independent. If it was on the Sun, we could laugh, you know. But this was the Independent. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I was halfway through my front door because I was going to Sweden to do a talk. I had people phoning me. Dr. Des, you have to create watches and, and fight this and you have to do this and that. I said, what did he say? You see, this is sometimes we get distracted. We don't actually look at what they're saying and then break it down to see if it even makes sense. So, in some talks that I've been doing since I came back, I'll show you how it works. There's a guy called Emmanuel Kant, European philosopher. He said, this fellow was quite black, a clear indication that what he said was stupid. So I'm black, therefore him is... Stupid. We're not hearing that. <laughs> He's black, so therefore he is... Stupid. Exactly. So you're black and you're stupid. You're black and you're cursed. You see the link? The leaders of Africa are by nature. No feelings that rise above the trifling, although many of them have even been set free. Not a single one was ever found who presented anything great in art or science or any other praise of equality. So we've never done anything. This was in 1783, he said this. We've never done anything. This is how this makes sense. I won't dwell on it, but look at what he says. He doesn't say Africans are less intelligent than Europeans. He says Westerners. So I said to people, what should really have happened? They banned him from speaking. What should have happened was me and two more people who have got a PhD should have gone up next to him and said, explain us. Because he's jumping out his points his hat and stamps, twice coincidence, three times scientific proven facts. <laughs> that's a film story, that's not ours. But that's what they say. So then I want to say, explain me. You know the only thing you could have said? It's because you're Westerners. <laughs> then I would have said, well, if you're saying Africans are less intelligent than us as Westerners, let them have same educational opportunities as we have here, and see who comes out more intelligent. You see, sometimes you must not be distracted. You must look at what they're saying. Don't get frightened by their title. I remember years ago, before I even knew what a, what a degree in sociology was, I used to argue with these people. But when I went doctor this and professor that, I said, I don't care who you are. Yeah, God, I can question you. And they don't like it. Let's move. This is an image that I use to absolutely destroy the idea of race. Yeah? I want you to look very carefully. Because I know in the Bible they present Egypt in a certain way. And then I have some historical inaccuracies like the Hebrews built the pyramids when the pyramids were built, forgotten, done, dust off, two, two and a half thousand years before they were there. But that's another story. I want you to look at this image. This is the oldest image of the member of the human family. This is the oldest image of a member of the human family drawing the members of the human family. It's 3,200 years old. It's found in one of the tombs in ancient Egypt. Okay? Ramesses III. This is the ancient Egyptian as they saw themselves. This is the Indo-European, or we are nowadays called them Caucasians. Yes? But really, they're Caucasus Asians, because there is no such continent as Europe. So when you're beating your children to learn geography and explaining to them that a continent is a large island surrounded by water, you tell me where the water divides Europe from Asia. Then you'll understand why they are Caucasus Asians. And not only that, you want another thing to think about. Why was last month October in Octis A, but it's the 10th month of the year? Somebody's playing with our mind. December, DEC is 10, yes? But it's the 12th month of the year. Don't believe all you get. This is the African from inner Africa. What's the difference? Three tassels and two tassels. This is the Arab or Jew. Semite. Another foolish thing you hear. Jews calling Arabs anti-Semite. They're the same people. But we don't think about that. How can you be anti-yourself? 